Hey, good afternoon everyone. Chris here with uh, LazyFA.com. Wanted to take a second and show you some of the stuff that we've been working on here. Um, we're going to actually be using LazyFA to make sense of uh, a Form 4 filing. If you're not familiar with what a, a Form 4 SEC filing is, it's basically whenever an insider needs to, uh, whenever an insider or a large holder of a company makes a purchase of uh, shares, they need to disclose that to the SEC on a uh, on a form four, and so one of the things that I've been working on lately, which I think is going to be really really cool, uh, is the ability to analyze these types of forms and these types of filings automatically using Lazy FA. So I've got some stuff that's sort of in development right now. It's obviously not completely finished yet, but I'm going to use it to just sort of demonstrate how we can use uh, some automated applications to make sense of some of these filings that are very cryptic and and uh you know often it takes a long time to to sort of make sense of them and to read them and understand them so uh, we're going to use apple as an example and the way that this is set up right now which is going to change this is a, a very crude sort of working semi-working demonstration that I, I just wanted to use to sort of demonstrate the technology um we're going to use uh Tim Cook, who's the CEO of Apple. And if we click on this, uh, you can see all the insiders are, are here, right? So I'm pulling in all of the insiders from the company from the data provider. And what we're looking at right now is just form three, four, and five filings. So we're gonna use Tim Cook as an example. If we click on Tim Cook, what this is doing is pulling in all of his transactions in the market in terms of common stock. So this is not looking at uh, options or anything like that. This is only looking at common stock. And basically what we're tracking is his ownership of his own company's stock over time. And so we can see here, for example, back on uh, August 24th of 2016, Tim Cook owned uh, approximately 2.3 million shares of Apple. Um, and if you look back here, you can see actually there's a there was a split in early 2014. Uh, that was a seven for one split and so you can see that on the chart here the data right now is not split adjusted hopefully it will be split adjusted in the future but that's dependent upon the data provider so right now it's not um, if you see any big spikes on the chart it may be because of a split so just keep that in mind but um, just to, to sort of move forward and show you what we can glean from this information right it just it sort of looks like he's got a you know a fairly static amount of stock and he's just sort of he, he keeps getting these big spikes. And if you look at the dates, you can see that they're always on August 24th or around August. That one was on September 21st. This one was uh, August, right? So August of 2014, August of 2016, August of 2015, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then they tend to, to bleed away over time. So uh, what does that tell us? Well, first thing I want to do is look at this big spike here from February of 2017 to uh, August of 2017, we can see that there was a spike from 901,000 shares to about one and a half million. And so what is that? So what I'm gonna do is go to sec.gov and go to company filings. And I'm gonna throw an Apple and we're gonna look at only ownership forms so here's all the form fours and then we're looking for one that's around August of 2017 and so you can see there's a couple of them here August of 2017 August 18th August 28th I'm gonna to go to the one that's August 28th just because first of all I know that that's the one that we're looking at secondly it's relatively easy to tell just because uh, whenever they, whenever an insider makes a purchase, they have to disclose it to the SEC within two days. So since that spike on the chart is August 24th, we know that within a couple of days after those transactions, uh, Tim Cook needs to disclose that to the SEC. So it's going to be after the 18th. So we're going to go in here and we're going to look at the Form 4. And so this might look complicated if you've never looked at a Form 4 before, um, but Lazy FA will make it much easier to understand it. So we know that we're on the right one. Tim Cook right there, he's the CEO. And so what does this tell us? We've got, these are the things that we're gonna be focusing on. The transaction code, we're gonna focus on the amount 
and we're going to focus on the this column here which is telling us whether they were acquired or uh, disposed of and then the second table down here shows us derivative securities which in this case is a restricted stock unit uh, and then there's some footnotes at the bottom which we'll get to in a couple seconds um, but what we're really interested in is you know this big spike in common stock and if we look at the date August 24th 2017 we can actually see right on the form 4 August 24th 2017 code M acquired 560,000 shares of common stock uh, so what does that mean does that mean that he went out into the open market and purchased it or something else and the answer is something else uh, so what we're gonna do is look up SEC form 4 uh, du, 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 uh, transaction codes. You could get these directly from the SEC. I just happen to know a couple of websites that have them all listed out. Um, but we're looking for transaction code M. What this is telling us is that th those shares were acquired via the exercise of conversion of a derivative security. So he either exercised some warrants or he converted some other derivative security into common stock and in this case we can see that he disposed of 560,000 shares of restricted stock and then acquired 560,000 shares of common stock so what does that mean well basically he had some restricted stock units which are part of his compensation package that he has converted into common stock so that now he can uh, sell them on the open market um, and turn them into cash so if you read the footnotes, you can see that the number of restricted stock units included uh, 280,000 time-based RSUs and 280,000 performance-based RSUs. And then the performance-based RSUs are based on Apple's share performance uh, during that time. So if you look here, it'll say Apple's beginning value was calculated to be 97.74 adjusted for dividends. And then the ending value for their total shareholder return was determined to be 166.72 and it talks about his uh, his restricted stock unit award uh, if it's within the top third of the companies in the S&P 500 yada 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 if you read this basically what I was telling you is that if Apple's shares go up then the amount of restricted stock units that are vested to him in other words that he can convert into common stock and then sell for cash will increase proportionately so in this case uh, Apple's total shareholder return was good it met the requirements of his uh, compensation agreement and so the full 280,000 performance based RSUs were vested uh, and 280,000 of them were time based uh, so just based on how long he's been with the company or you know some agreement that they have in their compensation package so total that's 560,000 shares and if you look at the chart on lazy FA you can see if we do the math 901.47 901.47 plus uh, 560 is gonna be 1.46 million and there's the spike so that's the reason for this spike in common stock is that he has converted 560,000 restricted stock units into common stock uh, and so then from that point we're just looking at the following transactions and you can see number two the second transaction on August 24th uh, dropped the total ownership down to 1.17 million which we can see here 1.17 million uh, this is code F which is a payment of exercise price or tax liability by delivering or withholding securities. So basically, you know, he's paid 560,000 shares of common stock essentially and he's got to pay $297,000 or 297 291,000 shares worth of tax on that. So that's those are shares that the company is withholding in order to meet uh, what's called the minimum uh, it's in footnote 291,000. It is in footnote 6 here. 52% of the total number of shares released are withheld by Apple to satisfy the minimum statutory tax withholding requirements on the vesting of restricted stock units. So that's what this 
drop is, right? So that's not him selling stuff into the market, right? That's basically Apple withholding those shares and saying you got to pay taxes uh, in order to meet the requirements of the vesting of RSUs in terms of tax liabilities. Uh, the rest of these on the 25th and the 28th are code S, which is an open market or private sale of securities. So we can see just by looking at these that from this point, right, he's converted 560,000 uh, RSUs into common stock and then paid 291,000 shares worth of taxes. The rest of this is dumped into the open market in order to convert it to cash. And so you can see the disposed code here. You can see the open market sale code over here. And we can follow it right along with the chart. 1.04 million, 1.035 million, 1.01 million, 901,000. And we'll see that on the chart right here. 1.17 down to 1.04, 1.03, 1.01, down to 901.47K. Uh, so that's how we can use something like Lazy FA to make sense of uh, a form that's really complicated to read if you don't know what you're looking at. Uh, this is not super hard to understand if you, you know, if you just read the footnotes and things like that. But I mean, it's much easier to just look at a chart and say, okay, we got vesting here, we've got vesting over here, we've got vesting here, we've got vesting here. So basically, what these big spikes in the chart are are his restricted stock units vesting based on his performance, based on Apple's shareholder performance, and based on how long he's been at the company. If I go into my code, which I'm going to do off screen here, and change common stock to uh, restricted stock, we will see by the way, what these numbers are, are the, the, the shares that are left after the transaction in question. So uh, after the transaction that occurred on August 28, 2017, his remaining holdings are 901,470-something shares, which is shown right here. Amount of securities beneficially owned following the reported transaction. Uh, another code that I'm paying attention to, by the way, when we get the data from the data provider is this column six, which talks about direct or indirect ownership. Direct ownership is basically that they own the securities in their own name. Uh, they're not held through a trust in somebody else's name, or they're not held by a spouse or something along those lines. Um, these are shares that are directly owned by them. And that's what, that's what we, what we really care about, because those are the things that, uh, that's going to give you an indication of what the, the insider's opinion on the company is, right? If they own the stuff themselves, that they're making purchases in the open market, making sales in the open market themselves in their own name. Uh, that tells us a lot of information about their opinions on where the company's going. Uh, so that said, I've changed this uh, in my code to focus on restricted stock units, which you'll be able to do just by a little button on the chart once I roll this out. But for now, I'm just going to refresh the page. And we will see that if we then look at his share ownership, you'll see, to see this is now focusing on restricted stock. So we can see that in 2014, he had 5.32 million shares. Uh, I'm not sure what this blip is in September 2014. That's most likely a bug in my code, um, but we're not going to worry about that for right now. Uh, 2015, he had 4.76. And if you do the math, 5.32 minus 4.76. 0 0.56, it's exactly 560,000 shares. And so he's basically got a you know 560,000 share per year vesting schedule. You'll see the same thing over here from 3.5 down to 2.94 is also 560,000 shares. Uh, there was an additional vestment that happened between 2015 and 2016. I'm not sure if that was performance related or what the deal was there, but 4.76 minus 3.5, 1.26 divided by 2.63, so about 630,000 shares times 2, um, 1.26 million shares vested in that time period for some reason. Um, so that's something that I would, you know, be interested in understanding where, you know, why those uh, other 630,000 shares uh, were were vested or 
why the 560,000 share limit changed. Maybe his compensation changed, um, or maybe there was uh, some sort of incentive or something along those lines. Um, but I think that this just demonstrates, you know, that, that it's, these forms are not terribly difficult to understand, but when you look at them on the SEC's website, uh, it takes a long time to sort of understand exactly what's going on. When you can look at a, uh, a chart like this uh, and just see really quickly what's going on, uh, that's the entire reason that uh, this, this website exists. That's the whole reason that this technology exists and why I'm building Lazy FA. So I just wanted to take a couple of minutes and talk about that and show you how we can use this site to make sense of a, uh, a Form 4 filing in the future. Uh, I'll be doing similar things with 10K annual reports, quarterly reports, uh, S forms, including things like uh, shelf offerings and uh, secondary offerings. So we can tell, for example, uh, how many shares are left in a shelf so that we could potentially predict when a stock is likely, when a company is likely to do a secondary offering, which would dilute the stock price. Uh, and then we'll be analyzing uh, news and, and other ownership forms as well. Um, so there you go, there's a little bit of info on some of the stuff that I've been working on. This is gonna be coming out, uh, hopefully within the next month or so, I'll have this stuff finished up, then you can go and mess around with it. Uh, in the meantime, there's plenty of other stuff that you can play with on Lazy FA. Um, this is a fantastic platform if you're interested in signing up for it. Uh, it's completely free to test out. Just go and create a username. There's five or six test symbols, and uh, you can use the entire site and uh, decide if you like it. And if you do, then I'd be happy to have you as a, as a user. So thanks very much, and I will talk to you all soon. Peace.